So I gave this at WordCamp Portland, went really well, so excited to share this with you all. It's my favorite talk title, holy guacamole. So I've been diving into Gutenberg and kind of block development since about March. Um, the project has been going on for a lot longer than that. Really ton of stuff to learn, so I wanted to share with everyone kind of that journey. And for me, it starts with why even learn this in the first place? WordPress 5.0 came out yesterday, have this great new block editor, and really we heard Gary kind of talking previously about this is all about the user experience and different ways to use content, and for me, I kind of wanted to fulfill a need, so I had a short code that displayed a Google map. Well, that's kind of not the best experience, right? Having to remember, is it address or location equals that I put in the square braces, and how is that going to look on the front end? And uh, my short code, there were some things that would, you know, you could adjust height and some of that, but it was hard to tell what was going on without publishing. So this is just a much better experience for your users. And so that's what drove me is the kind of content authoring uh, and really putting that user experience first. And this is one from uh, a set of blocks called WP Block Party, and they did data visualization blocks, which are really cool. I can't even imagine how this would look in a short code. Can you imagine how many parameters would be on that short code uh, to do this kind of stuff and see what's going on? But here you have those nice visuals, you have tons of settings you can adjust, so really creating this great experience. And this is gonna be the future of WordPress, and if you're not able to deliver this to your clients, they're gonna find somebody who can. So for me, it's really important to deliver this experience uh, to the people that I'm building projects for. And so I went through this long journey and I kind of want to back up. Hindsight gives us a lot of different perspective. And so for me, I can't go back in a time machine and give myself a bunch of advice. So I want to share some of these tips with you and hopefully uh, they're helpful. And the first thing that I really took away from kind of this journey of learning how to create blocks is that there are different levels of adoption for WordPress 5.0. So a lot of people I've talked to, different agencies, developers are going, Oh, I'm gonna have to learn React and JavaScript and all of this stuff. Well, you actually don't. Um, I kind of broke down these levels of progression. And the first one is just upgrade and test. Like just adopt 5.0 at all. And maybe the new editor doesn't make sense for a legacy project that's not in development anymore. And you install the classic editor. That's fine. That's still adopting WordPress 5.0. And then we have opt-in functionality, which we're gonna talk about. There's a ton, tons of new things that come out of the box, but there's some stuff you have to opt into and do a little bit of work for. Uh, and then you can kind of optimize the block experience. So out of the gate, there's a ton of core blocks, but there's things you can do to make that experience better for your clients. And then we can get into things like migrating short codes to blocks and creating custom blocks. And as I look at this, adoption kind of levels and progression, I really split it by language and realized that there's a lot you can do with PHP. I did it backwards. I dove into React and JavaScript and ES6 and all this stuff because I thought it was cool and I wanted to hack away on it. And then I figured out, man, there was a ton I could do before I even had to go down that path. Uh, and so that's my first tip is start with PHP. If this is all daunting and new and you haven't been playing around with it for uh, you know, the last year, just start with PHP. There's a ton of things you can opt into with theme support. Uh, one example here is color palettes or wide images. Raise your hand if you've seen a Gutenberg demo that has those nice full screen wide images. If you have an existing theme uh, outside of the core themes that have been updated, that is opt-in functionality. You will not get that if you upgrade to 5.0. You have to add theme support in a little bit of CSS, and then you can support those. The CSS that says, hey, my theme will show white images and support them, you opt into that. Uh, color palettes as well. Maybe you're working on a project and instead of the color picker allowing the user to pick any color they want, well, if I'm doing a site um, for somebody who has a specific brand, you can go in and limit that color palette to only colors that match the brand. And now people can't screw things up and shoot themselves in the foot when they're working with the editor. This is one of my favorites is post type templates. We've probably all created a custom post type for something. 
I started working with WordPress in 3.0 when custom post types came out because my projects needed something like a team page and custom post types are great for that. Well, if you go in uh, and you've played around with Gutenberg and, or you've seen the demos, there's that button to insert block and then this huge list of all the things, that can be daunting for your users. If you set up post type templates, you can actually define which blocks are gonna pre be pre-filled in there and what attributes. So if we go back to this, we have name, title, image, bio. This is easy for someone to fill out a team member compared to a blank slate and they have to know that, hey, I need to insert a heading block and it's an H4, not the H3 default. Like that's, people aren't gonna figure that out. So you can kind of provide some guide rails um, for things outside of the free form write a blog post. There's lots of structured content and we can use templates to provide that content and that structure. And you can even lock them down. So uh, if you lock that in, that means those blocks can't be deleted. They can't add something else. And guess what? Every team member is going to have a page that looks the same. So what if you're building landing pages that match a specific layout or all sorts of things where you kind of want to lock things into a certain template? You can do that and all it takes is a little bit of PHP when you're registering your custom post type. We also have block <coughs> filters. Now these are really nice because that huge long list of blocks that core ships with might not be right for every post type. Uh, if I'm doing a team member, does a video embed? Do I really want some team member like slapping their custom YouTube video on their team page? Uh, maybe not, right? If I'm working with a big brand, that's probably not gonna fly. Um, so you can adjust what blocks are available to what post types or even check user roles, all sorts of things. I think of this as if I'm developing something and I'm creating a custom post type for recipes and I develop a new block for ingredients, if you register a new block, by default it shows up everywhere. Take advantage of these filters. Trim out the blocks you don't need for certain post types so your users don't have a daunting list. And if you're creating a new block, define where it should be used. My ingredients block probably doesn't make sense outside of the context of my custom post type for recipes. And so a whole bunch of stuff we can do with just PHP. Uh, and then there is a large learning curve. When you get into creating custom blocks, that editorial experience in the new editor, in the React side of things, you're gonna have to learn that. Um, and that kind of is where there's this big line. And you're gonna have to take a big leap. But for a lot of your projects, there's a ton of this opt-in functionality and guide rails you can provide with PHP that's really kind of low-hanging fruit that you can go through and update for everyone and then take the time after all the dust is settled and start learning how to create custom blocks. And when you do that, like most projects in WordPress, start with a plugin. Um, so I've seen tons of things shoved in the themes and for me, you know, custom post types should be in a plugin. We're separating structure and style. Similarly, when you're creating blocks, you're going to have to register the, CS and the CSS and JavaScript that power that block. Dynamic blocks need a little bit of PHP. I actually prefer to make all my blocks dynamic. Um, even if I'm doing something simple, I might want to render it differently in the RSS feed than in the standard content context and you can do that with dynamic blocks. Uh, and if setting all of this up from scratch seems pretty daunting, there, you can scaffold a block plugin with WPCLI. It's also a great project called Great Guten Block that will set up Webpack that transpiles React and does all that stuff so you don't have to worry about it. But you will have to understand modern JavaScript. WordPress is going through this shift and uh, to write custom blocks, you're going to have to make that leap as well. JavaScript has been evolving. This is not some big new swing in the ecosystem. Um, in 2015, ES6 came out and outside of WordPress, like JavaScript really took off and all these things took off. There's been a new version of JavaScript every year since then. It's going to continue to evolve. And so you will have to understand React and JSX. Uh, make use of components. This was a big one for me. Before I dove into all this stuff, I was mostly working with jQuery and uh, those sorts of things. If you find yourself hard coding an input, you're probably doing it wrong. There's a component for that in the new editor that you should be using. 
Similarly, you want to change state, not the DOM. So with my map block, I defined uh, location as an attribute. And if the location is blank, that's one state, and I just define what markup should be there. So maybe I show a message that says location is required. If there's a valid address in the location field, I show markup that renders the map. I'm not actually editing the DOM directly, I'm just defining these different states and reacting accordingly. Review the source code. This really helped me to actually go take a look at the core blocks and see how they did things. So if you're building an image block or something uh, media-based, go look at the media blocks, the gallery blocks, get an idea for the uh, media placeholder components, all of those things. And a lot of this is documented in the handbook. I really wish I found this sooner. There's thorough documentation on all of the components. Here's an example of an accessible SVG. So instead of creating your own SVG, use the SVG component uh, that gives you accessibility. In-depth tutorials, tons of code samples, and the design principles. If you read one thing in the handbook before you get started, read the design principles. This will help you understand the philosophies of the project in the new editor, and taking that mindset when you go in to actually develop and create those experiences will really help out. And then be prepared for changes. 5.0 released yesterday, and it was, you know, been like two years since we had a release. And they're gonna come pretty fast and frequently uh, after this. So keep up with things, but know that you are not alone. <laughs> the entire community is in this together. This is a picture from WordCamp Miami in March when they had a dedicated JavaScript Gutenberg track. Uh, and some resources here, but that's all I have. So thank you very much. A Taylor ME on GitHub and Twitter. You can grab the slides and all the resource links. Uh, and good luck exploring block development. <laughs>